The themes of these next few psalms in our wisdom journey relate to the painful experience of of being betrayed. David knew exactly what that felt like. Now, the heading of Psalm 52 gives us some information. It says, when Doeg the Edomite came and told Saul, David has come to the house of Ahimelech. Now, you find that account, by the way, back in 1 Samuel chapters 21 and 22. Uh, David's been on the run from King Saul. God has rejected Saul in favor of David. Saul is now determined to kill David and eliminate his rival to the throne. And so David here is now running uh, for his life. And and he arrives at the town of Nob, where the tabernacle is set up. Nob is the place where the high priest Ahimelech, who is a descendant of Eli, you may remember, uh, resides. Ahimelech ends up helping David and his men by giving him some some old bread from the showbread table there in the tabernacle. And he also gives David a prized relic. It's been carefully wrapped and stored inside the tabernacle. It's a reminder of God's protection. It happens to be the sword that once belonged to the giant Goliath. Now, with these provisions, uh, along with this rather magnificent sword, David takes off running again. Now, the trouble is that everything that just happened was seen by King Saul's chief herdsman, this this wicked man named Doeg. Now, Doeg sees enough to know that this is an opportunity for him to be rewarded. He's going to give some information to King Saul about David. That's exactly what he goes back and does. Doeg's betrayal of David ends up in, in, in horrible bloodshed. King Saul orders the execution of the priest Ahimelech, kills all 84 priests who served with him there. So this tragic betrayal is is deeply troubling to David. In fact, David takes the time now to put his feelings, his frustrations, ultimately his prayer to God in the form of this psalm, Psalm 52. It opens here with a comparison between the betrayer and and God. David writes in verse 1, Why do you boast of evil, O mighty man? The steadfast love of God endures all the day. Of course, the evil here is betrayal. Betrayal, beloved, is really nothing more than a power grab. And David is wanting a power surge from God. Now, nowhere in this psalm are you going to find David taking matters into his own hands. He's, he's frankly going to let Doeg fall by God's hand of judgment. Verse 7 says here of Doeg, he sought refuge in his own destruction. One author says this verse reads like an epitaph on the grave of a wicked man. But, but one thing's for sure here, Doeg's character and actions revealed in Psalm 52 are really doing nothing more than demonstrating the truth of the next psalm. Psalm 53 now opens at verse 1 by reading, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Now, in this context, the fool is someone who basically says God isn't real. God doesn't see. God doesn't hear. God doesn't know what I've just done. Let me tell you, God sees. God hears. And God knows. In fact, only a fool, David says, would think that he can get away with sinning without God knowing it. And in this case, it's betrayal. Now, Psalm 54 continues uh, this theme of betrayal, but it's, it's more painful to David now because of, of who it involves. The heading of this psalm tells us here, When the Ziphites went and told Saul, Is not David hiding among us? Now, you need to understand the Ziphites were members of David's own tribe, the tribe of Judah. The Ziphites were David's extended relatives, his own extended family. I mean, all those cousins and aunts and uncles, these are the people you see at that annual family reunion out there at the lake in the summer. 
You all get T-shirts ordered. You know, you get your family name printed on them. You get a photograph of everybody, young and old, out there at that picnic. These are the people who betrayed David. It's David's family members who give Saul David's exact location. Now, by God's intervention, David is able to get away. Guess what? It happens again. Those same relatives, 1 Samuel 26 tells us, once again, give Saul David's exact location. Now, frankly, that would be the last time I'd ever want to see my relatives again, no matter how good the chicken was out there at the lake during that reunion. That would be it. Well, now Psalm 54 follows here. It's a short song. Uh, I got to tell you, it's long on wisdom, and it and it offers three principles that you can you can process, you can use as you process your own personal response to betrayal and the pain you feel. The first word that comes out of this little psalm is the word remember. David writes here in verse three, "They do not set God before themselves." You see, that's a reminder that people who betray you have betrayed God first. They're traitors to God first and foremost. Beloved, if you've been betrayed, take the time to remember that God himself was betrayed by Satan, who then influenced God's special creation, Adam and Eve, to turn around and betray God as well. And what about, what about God the Son, the Lord Jesus? Wasn't he betrayed by Judas? betrayed by his own people, his own extended family, the nation of Israel. In other words, the Lord knows how it feels to be betrayed. Remember that. The second word that comes out of this psalm that strikes me is the word trust. Listen to David's prayer here in verse 4. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. Let's put it, let's put it into our own words. I, I can trust my life to the plan of God, and I can entrust those who betray me to the justice of God. I don't know when his justice is going to be accomplished. In fact, my life might not get any easier any anytime soon. But while others are saying there's no God to see or hear or care, I'm going to trust in the fact that I know God is alive and well. The third word that comes out of the psalm is, to me, the word worship. You see, worship has to take the place of revenge. Revenge means that we get stuck in life. Worship moves us forward in life. And that's David's focus here in verse 6 when he says, I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. Psalm 55 continues this theme of betrayal, only this time David is agonizing over over the betrayal, uh, not of an enemy or some extended family member he only sees once a year at the lake, but of a very close friend. He lets us know that here in verse 13 as he writes, It is you, a man, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend. We used to take sweet counsel together. The Bible scholars uh, have suggested the context here is uh, the betrayal of Ahithophel, to which David is referring. Ahithophel was David's former counselor. Ahithophel uh, betrays David. He joins David's son Absalom as Absalom attempts to take his father's place and kill his father. Ahithophel even counsels Absalom on on how to catch up to David and kill him and and literally be done with him. All that's back in 2 Samuel chapters 15 through 17. Well, what do you do when betrayal hits that close to home? This would certainly excuse uh, a, a desire for revenge, right? It would only be natural to strike back. You may have heard the funny story I did of the man who had been bitten by a rabid dog, and he went to get tested, and his his doctor finally came in with the, the grim results that he indeed had rabies. 
Well, that man didn't say a word. He just got out a piece of paper and began to write feverishly. And the doctor thought the man was writing out his last will and testament. And he said, "Uh, listen, don't worry. There's a cure for rabies. You're not going to die. And the man said, well, I know that. But first, I'm just making a list of people I want to go bite. Well, isn't that the way the world works? You bite back. You get even. Isn't isn't that the way our hearts think? I I want to get people back. Well, God says to do what David instructs us to do here as David moves under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says here in verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. Cast your burden on the Lord. By the way, the word burden includes your emotions that are so hurt, uh, your thoughts that are ever ready to plan revenge, your memory that wants to play over and over again that offense, so you feel it all over again. David says, no, no, throw all of that onto the broad shoulders of your faithful Lord. And remember, when you feel the pain of betrayal, well, your Lord understands exactly how you feel. Well, beloved, until we set sail again on our wisdom journey, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.